So all of you have been attacked or harassed. Just go ahead and tell me a little bit about your stories and we'll start with you, Linda. Just okay. what happened? Um, it was the second week of school in September. We were coming back from an assembly and two girls in the assembly were kind of having little words going back and forth to each other and they had been told to stop it and they were, if I remember right, they were even separated in the assembly. We got back in the classroom afterwards and their seating assignments, they sat near each other, uh, right behind each other and they kept going with the little comments underneath their breath and just not getting on task with the first assignment. So I went over to tell them to be quiet and to get on task. They were disrupting everybody else and without any warning, they stood up from their desks uh, the one behind me grabbed the back of my belt, used me as a shield, and I was punched in the stomach, kicked in the back, and thrown against the desks. Um, it was painful, uh, needless to say. Uh, it was embarrassing because I lost continence. I was hit so hard that later on I was diagnosed with a bruised bladder. Um, security didn't show up until 15 minutes after the fight ended. The teacher across the hall, a gentleman who taught history, he heard the commotion, came over, and he rescued me, and he ended up getting scratched in the middle of the fight, but it allowed me enough time to get over and crawl to the panic button. Um, yeah. But there was no help. And This uh, is two girls. Yes. You were attacked by two girls. Yeah, who are my size, basically. So they were adult size, you know, eighth graders, and um, they thought nothing of it. And they did this right in the middle of the classroom in front of all the students. Right. All the students, you know, basically backed up against the walls, uh, but unfortunately they stared, stayed and just watched. And how did this affect how you teach? How did it affect the education for all students? Well, the, the biggest problem was that I felt very uncomfortable walking through the desks and around the students like I normally did, you know, helping one-on-one. -on -one. I tended to stay near my desk at the front um, I was always aware of how do I get out of here if something else happens. And the, the biggest problem is wondering when they were going to come back. They were both sent to Enterprise Academy uh, for the rest of that six week period. And then when they were set to come back, I was told that they were going to come back in my classroom and I went, no, they're not. And so I found out that I could have filed the paperwork to have them transferred to another school. Uh, which was just down the road, so it wasn't that far or anything. I filed the paperwork. My husband and I went in and spoke to the principal. She refused to sign the paperwork and said, no, when they came back, I needed to welcome them back. Mm -hmm. And David, talk a little bit about your story because you've been pushed around a couple times yourself. Okay, so yeah. I was uh, taking um, my class of kids down to the um, gym. Mm -hmm. They were having a uh, faculty um, student uh, basketball game. And mine was the last class to go downstairs. So the sixth grade was all empty. And as I was walking my kids down, I saw another student walking the other way. And they shouldn't have been walking that way. And I asked, where are you going? And uh, she turned and just cussed me out. And I can go wherever I want. And that's what she told me. Uh, so at that point, I had to, all my kids were there. I couldn't just let her go back. So I told her to stop. She again cussed me out. So I ran up ahead, I saw another teacher. I had that teacher get security. Uh, and there was a little skinny part of the hall, so I put my arms out to stop. You know, I put my arms out in a T. And when she came up, she just shoved me and, uh, and just pushed me. And then we waited for security to get there and I was making sure she wouldn't continue down the hall. So, see, I just got shoved. So you had a middle school girl shove you? Yeah, a 11-year-old. 11 11-year-old 11 year old. shoved you as an adult. <laughs> right. I mean, not yeah. as a little shove. Yeah. I mean, she shoved. And it was on camera, and the security officer, we have a police officer, a resource officer that's there, and she came to me and says, you know, that's assault. I mean, that's, um, and I told her, I told her, well, see, for me, that's just a, that's just a regular day at, at the job. So, um, so it's not unusual for students well, to push teachers, I've never, teachers. I've never, that's the first time I was shoved like that, but mm -hmm. um, where I was cussed at, that's not unusual. It was unusual that she didn't stop, <laughs> but uh, it wasn't unusual with the behavior. And Paige, you had more of the harassment going on. Tell me about that. Um, yeah, so I had the harassment. Mine went throughout the school year till about April, May, when I finally, the student did the one last thing. Um, 
Mine was basically, like I said, sexual harassment. Um, I was trying to make it like a learning opportunity for the student. And I had talked to counselor and had the counselor speak with the student um, several times. And it took a while even to get to that because I didn't want to immediately go to that. I just wanted to tell him it was an inappropriate behavior, you know, and um, try to keep teaching when stuff like that is going on. Um, what kind of, so sexual harassment, what type of comments were students saying to you? Well, it was one student in particular. It, this wasn't like a lot of students or anything. One student in particular. And what he would do is he'd come up, I'd be in the hallway walking or I'd come in the room, he'd come up and put his arm around me, want to give me a big close hug. And I would tell him, you know, inappropriate behavior, back up. Um, constantly, that's mainly what he did, constantly, hey, you know, what's up, put his, like, put his arm, he even jumped on me one time in the hallway with his back legs and front all on me, and um, he would do that in the classroom, and I was in an inclusion class at the time, and um, so there were like 30 students, it was a history class, and I was in there, um, and even the students would call him out. Would you leave her alone? Uh, you know. How'd so, that make you feel? Uh, not too good. Mm -hmm. And for the most part, and I could carry on in the classroom, but I had many talks with him. He apologized many times, but then the final straw was the day we were getting ready to take a test, an online test, and um, he said a few very inappropriate words for everybody in the class, he stood up and said it. Um, I made him go out in the hallway. I wrote him up, which wrote a referral, sent it down. It took like an hour and 10 minutes for the, an assistant principal to come. When she did, because he was out in the hallway now, um, she basically did not acknowledge me. She went to him, she leaned over, whispered in his ear, he starts laughing and she walks off. Mm. And um, I was like, what's going on? And so later, I went to go say something to her, but she was busy. And then the school day's over, everybody's busy. So we left it at that. Um, I didn't know what had happened exactly to him, what, he, what was going to happen. So I went the next day, because it wasn't sitting with me, mm -hmm. okay, too well. And, um, I went to talk to her. She was busy again, so I saw the principal, so I said something to him, and to make a yeah. long story short, Just they not, basically- never got resolved. Right, it never really got resolved. And you all have stories of being attacked by students. Why don't we hear about this? Because teachers are afraid to speak up. Yes, <laughs> they're afraid for their jobs, especially in this economy. Um, since everything's taken a downturn, school systems are dropping teachers. And many of the teachers desperately need their jobs. And so they've learned to just keep it quiet because they don't want to be labeled as the troublemaker just because you stand up and say something's wrong. It's, it's uncalled for, but it still goes on. And even now, the teachers who have retired don't want to come forward because they're working still worried about their retirement pay. E even though that's set, they're worried that anything they do will come back on them or that someone will look them up and find where they are. And David, what do you think about that? Because you're still teaching now. I mean, are you fearful of losing your job by speaking out? Or how do you feel about that? Well, when this story came out before, my, my administrators, we talked and, um, no, I don't feel like I'm afraid to lose my job. Um, I do think that a lot of people don't report it. A lot of times they don't report it because something like for me, I was shoved. Well, that's, that happens. And, and no, it shouldn't happen. But that's the, we get that kind of behavior from, from our students sometimes. And, and that's just part of the job. Uh, well, yeah, and it shouldn't be. It's it been, shouldn't be. It shouldn't be, but that's what it is. It's become commonplace. Yeah. For and that to happen. A lot, of, a lot of the problems are some parents 
are very supportive and they say, you know, if my child does anything, you let me know and we'll handle it at home. I've never had a problem with any of those children and those parents are wonderful. Unfortunately, there are a lot of parents out there who say, don't you dare tell my child no. And they believe 150% of whatever their child says. Um, the teacher is lying, obviously. And rather than deal with an angry parent who is going off in an office, the principal would rather, you know, quiet the parent down and tell the teacher, you know, enough's enough. And last year alone, more than 700 local teachers attacked by students. Do you think schools are trying to hide that this is happening? Yes, absolutely. Why do you think so, Paige? <laughs> um, the reputation, of course. I mean, everything's tied to what school I taught in high school. Um, it's very important for all the people, like especially in Virginia Beach. Um, where you go to school, I mean, the real estate, everything's tied to it. You know, your sports teams, the money's coming in, um, things like that. Everything is tied to it, to their reputation. So I feel like that's why a lot of it, and a lot of times, I mean, the administrators are overwhelmed, okay? Um, but they've been, they get told too many times about different things, and they just kind of look away. And Paige, you told me earlier that you're even fearful about talking about this issue because you feel like you might not be able to get a job again as a teacher. Correct. I do. I feel like I could be uh, blackballed, so to speak. Okay. Um, so what I want to ask now is what can be done? I think if the media continues to dig and dig deep, okay, not just surface, but if, if you can dig deeper, um, you're going to find a whole lot of, not in just this area with teachers, and it's, it's kind of widespread. Um, like I said, told you earlier, I feel like attitude reflects leadership, mm -hmm. and it trickles down to our students. Yeah, I think if the story stays out there, and you do, like what Paige said, keep digging, and keep asking the questions, they can't sweep it under the rug anymore and pretty soon the parents are gonna start asking the questions. School board members need to get out of their offices and visit their schools unannounced. They need to pop in, they need to get to know not only the parents who elected them in their positions, but they also need to get to know the teachers. A lot of times when the school board members come through the school, the teachers are absolutely told, don't say a word. And, Definitely. you know, do not, if you're seen talking quietly with a school board member, then you're pulled aside and questioned and given the, uh, the third degree to find out what you said. School board members, you need to get out there and get to know your teachers, get to know your parents, visit places, you know, you were elected to pay attention and not just for the academics, but also for the safety of the students as well as the safety of the teachers. Right. What do you think, David? What needs to be done? Well, I think there's more than, than, than just the school administrators. I'm hoping that parents see this and the and parents of these children because the behaviors we're talking about are unacceptable. Mm -hmm. It's not so much that it's being hidden by administrators. Uh, for my, for my s story, I, I, that wasn't the case. I mean, they were very supportive. But for that kind of behavior to happen, um, and so many kids have that kind of behavior, it's been a big change. It wasn't like that when I went to school. Well, I don't like. I don't yeah. think a lot of parents realize what schools are like nowadays. I think parents should come into the schools and see what's going on. They're welcome in the classroom. They should come in, sit in, uh, see what's going on at their school, and that will change um, maybe some of these behaviors. That they'll see that's unacceptable. Have more parent involvement and enforce the discipline at home. Well, not only that, but I mean, I mean, look at it as a society. Okay. We've become desensitized, okay, as a whole. I mean, I did. Just walking down the halls, it was nothing for me to hear constant cursing in the F word. I mean, that's just all the time. That's like, you can't even write them up for that because it happens so much, okay? Um, so the more desensitized we become, the worse it's getting, okay? Um, but then those teachers who do speak out, once again, I did the same thing. Uh, when I switched schools and 
heard kids in the classroom either bullying another student or saying foul language or just horsing around too much and I would call them down, I was then called down by um, my last principal for that I was expecting too much. That's just how kids are. Uh, I need to just be cool and try to be their friend. It's like, when are they going to learn how to be civilized members of society? If they're never held accountable, if they don't learn how to deal with negative consequences when they're small, what's going to happen as they get larger? I can tell you, they become in high school, which I taught, and that to me is the last before you head out into the real world. Mm -hmm. um, and then when things don't get finished there, I mean, we just had a story about the students at that school that mm -hmm. people, uh, the student even tweeted, didn't he? Yeah. About what he was going to do. And now, nobody pays attention. I want to ask, what do you guys want to say to 13 News, I guess, for staying on this issue and bringing this to light? Thank you. Yes. And keep it up. <laughs> um, my attack was nine years ago. Um, I tried to get the word out when it first happened and was told, well, that's just an anomaly. I'm sure they'll handle it within the school system. And I have mentioned it periodically. I've even mentioned it to um, members of the House of Delegates and one of our state senators and was told, well, that's kind of a local school board issue. He didn't want to deal with it. Where, as all of the public schools are having to go through state accreditation, they pass the state SOLs, teachers have to be state certified. So when is the state Department of Education going to stand up and say, and it's going to be because of reporters like you and Channel 13 for actually getting it out there so they can't run away from it anymore. They're going to have to deal with it eventually. Right. What do you want to say to that's, 13 uh, News? That's just what I want to say. Thank you for doing this. Um, when I saw it, I knew I had to come out and say something. Um, for a while, I haven't, you know, I didn't feel like I had concrete proof, and that's what, if Channel 13 could keep working until they have some concrete proof <laughs> of something, um, that would be nice. Um, it's definitely, it, it's helped validated what I felt. So yeah. it was nice to see the story on 13 right, News. Right, it was nice to see the story on 13 News. Okay, and you think we should stay on this? Oh yeah, definitely. I, there's a lot more going on. Mm -hmm. What about you, David? I think it's an important story, and my hope is that parents are watching this, and I hope mm -hmm. parents see that these are your, you know, these are your kids. This is your community. Um, you need to get involved, and get involved with your school. And don't just rely on the school is going to teach your kids. You need to get involved and teach your kids also, and be there. And we won't have this type of behavior because there's a disconnect. You can see it at the school. See with the kids. The kids have two worlds. They have their school world where they can kind of act crazy and then they go home and there's somebody else. They need to come in and get those two worlds together and, and see what their kids are really like and be involved. That's what I'm hoping that this story does. And pay attention when your kids come home with a particular story. If they come in and say, you won't believe what happened in class today that my teacher was attacked by two students, don't shove it off as, yeah, right, you know, it's probably nothing happened. Pick up the phone, start calling, start asking questions, start getting with some of the other parents. That's going to be what changes it. If enough people start standing up and making sure that our students are safe as well as our teachers, then you'll see a change. And is there any type of support system within a school? Like if you're attacked, what do you do? How do you get help? Uh, the big, well, the big thing was when I was told is that if something happens, you are not to break up a fight, you are not to put your hands on the student, you are supposed to remove yourself from the situation. Um, the problem is is that that means you're not even allowed to defend yourself. So there's no system in place for teachers. If you're attacked, you can't do anything about it. Not really, other than if you can find a panic button and hope the security comes by. Hmm. Yeah. I, don't I don't feel like there is. Um, I mean, there is a protocol, I'm sure, but I don't feel like there's anyone that you can go to and feel like you will be supported once you've reported it. So maybe you would like someone even outside your school yes. who you could go to. Yes. Mm -hmm. That would be, I think, a better way to handle it. Well, And some yeah. people say, well, join the union and you'll be able to do that. But there was an incident um, the year before I was attacked 
a teacher, uh, his first year teaching, he had come, uh, I believe it was from Troops to Teachers, where he was in the military beforehand. Two seventh graders started a fight, and he separated the fight in the hallway. He knew what to do from being in the military, and he gently just held a student up against the locker. You know, wasn't holding them onto him, just trying to keep him away from the other students. The parents of that student ended up suing him, and so he picked up the phone and contacted his um, union rep, and they arranged for an attorney, and they were supposed to meet at the school and discuss between the parents, attorney, and the school administrators, and then um, with him there and his attorney. And he kept waiting for his attorney at the front steps, and she wasn't there and she wasn't there and he found said, well, I've got to get to this meeting. He walked into the meeting and she was already there and having laughing, joking with everybody else. He was the one who did the right thing in making sure that the other students were safe. And yet he was put on administrative leave for the rest of the year and he ended up quitting the system and moved to another system further up the peninsula. Okay, and I just wanted to close with, why is this so important to take control of this issue? It's a society issue. Um, if our students don't learn how to behave in the classroom, how are we going to make sure that they know how to be civilized members of society outside the classroom? If teachers are afraid to teach, how are we supposed to get the information across so our students are successful? Yeah, I mean, that's pretty much it. They need to be productive and um, know how it works out in the workplace when, once they get out, or college. Well, it's important because we don't want more teachers getting hurt. We yeah. want these behaviors to stop. And it'd be nice to have someone to talk to. Usually, uh, if something like this happens, you just get together with the other teachers and you talk about it with them. And, and normally, they have stories similar or the same, and you feel a little bit better. But um, yeah, you don't want this to happen again. You don't want more teachers to get hurt. And you don't want incidents to happen. You want school to be someplace for learning, not someplace where you have these confrontations, fights, and bullying, and teachers, you know, having to defend themselves. That's not what school's all about. Yeah. School's about learning. And it'd be nice to have a place of learning again. Yeah. You want, you want teachers shouldn't be bullied either yeah. <laughs> by their administrators. Right. You want your best and brightest to teach. But if your best and brightest are afraid, they're going to choose other means to make a living or they're going to quit teaching altogether, um, change careers, and we're not going to have the best and brightest in the classroom to teach our next generations. Well said. <laughs> Is there anything else that anyone wanted to say that I didn't ask? I don't know. I just feel like there definitely needs to be a lot more backup within a school system. Um, they should have gone through a lot of steps. They sh could have helped me by saying, well, maybe you need to go to the EAP, the em Employee Assistance Program. They could have offered several things. And I knew this, but by then I was, I was really just tired. Mm -hmm. Tired of the so fight. So teachers need more help. Oh, yeah, when they go definitely. through something like this, they need someone to go to. Well, you need to well, feel so like you're, you're being still backed teaching up. Your class. Mm -hmm. So you're still putting in work hours. I mean, it was normal for me to put in 16 hour work days because I taught English and history uh, at the time of this. So I was grading essays, developing lesson plans. I did more than just pass out a bunch of worksheets. And then you're supposed to deal with something like this on top of your workload, on top of paying attention to the students who do care about learning. And all of that stress. Maybe have some you campaigns down. in the schools. <laughs> don't attack teachers because you see all these posters, <laughs> you know, about bullying. Don't attack students, but maybe just be open about it. Have, you don't start want to a campaign. Any ideas. Put on attack the side. Don't attack teachers. I never <laughs> thought I could do that. That's yeah. the next thing you know. Is that something that schools would support, though, if you started a campaign? Don't attack teachers. <laughs> um, well, to me, that should be a given. I mean, you know, that's what I mean by the desensitization. You know. I mean, I don't know. Maybe the maybe just, local communities, maybe the faith-based communities, the different churches and synagogues. But you can't. Maybe it's religion and well, no, public that, education. Well, no, but that's not that's not mixing. <laughs> I'm talking I about know. when they're when they're at church on Sunday, teach a lesson in respect, and it's not just respect for other people; it's also respect for yourself 
that you don't turn around and attack someone for no reason or just because they said something. That maybe if the whole community gets involved, the parents, you know, the pastors of the churches, the administrators, the school board members, as well as your representatives in the House of Delegates and the Senate and the General Assembly. If everyone gets involved, then those few students who are going to be that way are going to learn that that's no longer acceptable. Okay. Well, thank you all very much. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> okay.